Thanks for joining us today and welcome to Solving with AWS Solutions, your deep dive into architectures built by AWS that are ready to deploy instantly in the cloud. I'm Allison and I'm joined by Matt today and we're here to talk to you about the AWS Edit in the Cloud solution. Thank you, Allison. Our AWS Edit in the Cloud solution enables you to have an editorial experience from anywhere in the world. It's just a simple click of the mouse and your infrastructure can get deployed. That sounds fantastic. Let's dive in. Matt, can you tell us about AWS Edit in the Cloud? Happy to. So AWS Edit in the Cloud is a way of really building an editorial experience all on AWS without having to worry about the indi individual components and all the pieces to make this really a functional system. Okay, so how do I find it? So it's actually on our solutions page. So let's go ahead and dive right in. On our solutions page, we have our implementation guide as well as a link to GitHub so you can take the source code and adapt it to make it your own. Okay, so I see you've stopped here on the architecture. I want to really understand how is this put together? So let's dive into that architecture. So on this architecture, it's really broken up into multiple components. So let's start high level. It has a VPC and availability zones in order to really put, put together all the components. Then we dive in and we have our G4DN EC2 instance, which is your editorial host. And that uses our NVIDIA T4 graphics card, so you get a familiar experience for your editorial workflows. On this side of the house, we have our AWS Directory Services, which is a managed service for Active Directory. So that'll be our, our authentication system. And then down below, we have our FSX for Windows File Server, which is going to be our NAS, or our shared file system. And that's a managed service as well to make life a lot easier, and you don't have to worry about these items day to day. Okay, so those components make sense to me, but I see here that you also have third-party software in Teradici. Can you tell me why that's important? Yeah, so Teradici gives you the ability to remote connect via their PC over IP Ultra protocol, which in factors in latency, audio, and video synchronization. So across there, you'll have the host installed on the EC2 instance, and on the client, you'll just have your client software. All you need to bring is your Teradici license to install on that server. Okay, and latency is so important, as you know. I want to make sure that it feels to my editors like it's editing uh, as if it were on-premise. So thank you for explaining that. How about security? How is that considered here? So security is factored in a lot of different ways. So let's go ahead and deploy the solution and talk through it. So on the solution itself, we're going to start by giving it a name, and that's going to be your editorial name or your project name. Then we're going to pick what availability zones do we want to deploy this infrastructure in, and that's important because we want to make sure the region and availability zone is as close to that editor as possible to give them that seamless experience. But really where you're touching on is how do we make sure that this editor is who they say they are and they can get into the system. And we do that via their IP. So their IP is going to be unique for each individual editor, and we put them in here to make sure that it is the right editor connecting into these systems. Okay, my editors can then be located anywhere globally. They don't have to be in the same location. Is that right? That's right. So your editors can be anywhere in the world, and we can open up the IP block to allow really any inbound connection as well. But really where it dives into is each editor is then going to get a username and a password, because we want to make sure we're able to authenticate who they are with their username and password. And that will also dive into their access and security towards the shared file system as well. Can I see this in action? Yeah, let's go ahead and launch it. So we've launched the, we've actually launched an instance. I've already loaded in media, and we're, we can jive into my normal editorial experience. I can add media in here, and I can just go through and create magic. What if my editors have their favorite editorial software? How can that be engaged in Edit in the Cloud? So Edit in the Cloud is a framework. You can bring in any of your applications that you're used to, your applications, your plugins, your peripherals, all those are available. All you do is install your software, launch it, and you're good to go. Wonderful. Last question, where am I going to store all of this content once I've been editing it? So once you're done editing all your software and you're ready to close down all of your instances and your services that you have running, you can offload all of this material into S3, where it can be really affordable and easy, and more importantly, accessible from anywhere in the world as well. That is fantastic. Matt, thank you so much for walking me through AWS Edit in the Cloud today. That was wonderful. Thank you for having me. Check out this solution and many more on the AWS Solution site. Thank you for tuning in to Solving with AWS Solutions. We look forward to seeing you again next time.